All right. Welcome to worship today. I'm David Hall. I'm one of the pastors here at Christ Church. Happy New Year to you. It is so good to be in worship today and to see each of you here. Also, it's good to know that we have others worshiping with us from home today. Next Sunday, we go back to our normal Sunday morning schedule, which means at 930 here in the sanctuary, we'll have our gospel contemporary service. And then at 1115 here in the sanctuary, we'll have our blended traditional and down in the commons at the same time, we'll have our contemporary service. Uh, we hope you'll be there and for your favorite service. And if you can't come for some reason, each of those will be available live streamed and on Facebook live as well. Our community cafe will resume not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, January the 11th with a wonderful meal. Those are free. We invite everyone to come, but we also invite, ask you to invite someone to come with you. Uh, our Wednesday evening programming will start then. Now, that's January 11th, so plan to come and be with us and start thinking about who it is that you're going to invite to come with you. We are very pleased today to have Reverend Mary Thompson with us as our guest preacher today. Mary is one of our own. Yes. <clears throat> When Mary was working on her Masters of Divinity down at Candler School of Theology, she was part of our children's department working on our staff. She got her degree, and then she became our very first director of missions. She did an awesome job with that. And now she is uh, at the conference level. She's executive director of our camping and leisure ministries. And Mary, we're so happy to have you here with us today, along with her little boys, Beckett and Oliver. Uh, it's so good to have you come back to Christ Church. Then we need you to do something for us. We'd like you to register your attendance. There's a red attendance pad in the back of the seats closest to the aisle on each row. If you're closest to that, if you would take out the pad, write in your name and contact information, pass it along your row and back. And if you are worshiping with us from home, please open the Christ Church app on your phone and let us know that you're with us. Next Sunday, January 8th, we begin a brand new worship series with a new sermon series. We'd like you to see this video for a preview of that. People do different things to change up where they live. Some move the furniture around, paint the walls, or put up some new artwork. Others totally renovate the kitchen, bathroom, or add on a room. For others, they just need to build something totally new. So let's put that in spiritual language. Do you know somebody who is wrestling with what they believe about God, Jesus, the Bible, about what it means to be a Christian, whether they want to do the church thing at all? There's a lot of talk out there about people deconstructing their faith. Maybe that's you or someone you know. Or maybe you're just reconfiguring or renovating your faith house. Wherever you are with any of that, Let's explore it together with this sermon series beginning January the 8th. Start the new year at Christ Church with the sermon series you can build on. And be sure to tell somebody else you think could benefit from it. Has anybody seen my goggles? Good morning. It is so good to be in worship with you. Will you stand with us and join in this morning? We serve a good God, a great God, a great King above all God. Come on, put your hands together. Your mercy. 
Becky Hall, I'm the executive director here on staff at Christ Church, and our scripture reading for today comes from 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21 verses. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and continue singing together a song that reminds us that we have victory through Christ and that God is fighting on our behalf. Let's sing this together.
stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Amen. You may be seated. Well, hello and Happy New Year. Welcome to Children's Moment. I'm Mary Beth Hammett, the Children's Ministry Director at Christ, and I'm so glad that you're here. So kids, gather around and let's just chat for a moment. Today I have with me a little butterfly. It's not real because it's too cold for that, but this is a representation of a butterfly. They're beautiful creatures, aren't they? But they don't really start off this beautiful. You know what they look like before they become a butterfly? Yeah, a caterpillar. Now, I have some friends who think caterpillars are cute, but I don't really think they are because they remind me of worms, and worms are not beautiful. But inside that little caterpillar, there's the DNA for a butterfly, and it spins that little cocoon, and in a few weeks, it comes out of that cocoon, and it's a beautiful butterfly. Now, God created a new creation with this. He didn't just stick wings on a, on a caterpillar and say, you're good as a butterfly. No, it completely changes when it comes out of that cocoon. And you know what? God does the same thing for us if we ask him to. He will come into our life and change our life into the beautiful creation that he designed for us. So this week and the days to come, as you think on that, we have to decide, do you want to be a worm, caterpillar, or a butterfly? And that's up to you and to God as you ask Him into your life. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. A worm or a butterfly, what do you want to be? Happy New Year to you all, and thank you as a church family for your generous year in giving. And as we kick off this new year, we're excited about kicking off the opportunities for missions and ministries through this church, and your giving makes that possible. You may give through a variety of ways by uh, putting it in the uh, boxes and baskets as you leave from the sanctuary area or giving online or through the church app or by turning it into the church office or dropping it off. But thank you for being a generous church and for your giving throughout the year. Let us bow together in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for this brand new day and the gift of life today, for a brand new beginning, a brand new year, a brand new month, a brand new week, a brand new day. And with you, life in you is always full of new beginnings for you to do your creative work in our lives and through us to touch the lives of others. We pray that you will lead us and guide us as individuals and as a church into this new year and help us to be willing to follow and follow in your footsteps. We lift up to you this day those who need you in special and particular ways. 
who need your gifts of healing in their lives through the variety of people you have enabled on this earth to bring healing for the grace of healing. We pray that you'll be with the caregivers who walk along beside them. We pray also for those who've lost loved ones and are grieving. Their hearts are broken, but we thank you for your scriptures that promise throughout the Old and the New Testament of your comfort and your peace and your hope and your strength. So pour these gifts into their lives as they too begin a new year and maybe it's a little bit more difficult than for others. We pray that you'll bless Reverend Mary this morning as she brings our message and we thank you for the way her life and this church have touched each other's lives and helped so many people through the years. And we pray, Lord, that we may indeed uh, be people that you work through to meet the needs of others. Now we pray together the prayer you continue to teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning and Happy New Year. I am honored to be able to preach here again at Christ Church. I can remember worshiping here on New Year's Day in 2011. Reverend Will Connor shared the message that day. Uh, that was 12 years ago. I'm not making any promises that you will remember the message 12 years from today. But I can remember that sermon. It was a great one. And I'm happy to be here to share with you all. On the very first day of a new year, when many people are setting goals, making commitments, and casting vision to what their year will be like. I began working at Christ Church on January 7th, 2010. I remember that day because the University of Alabama won the national championship that evening. And I quickly learned that I was the only person on staff that was happy about it. <laughs> My last day was June the 30th, 2017. So I worked here in a few different roles for about seven and a half years. Just a few months ago, I had the privilege of preaching homecoming service at the church that I grew up in. And even though that church was my home church for the first 18 years of my life, I have to say that this morning feels just as special of a homecoming for me. So thank you to Nathan and church for inviting me back. Thank you. As David shared earlier, I'm currently serving as the Executive Director of Holston Camp and Retreat Ministries in the Holston Conference. I oversee five camps, Camp Bays Mountain, Camp in the Community, Camp Dickinson, Camp Lookout, and Camp Wesley Woods. It's a really fun job that sounds like I get to be outdoors a lot more than I actually do. A lot of the work I do is behind a computer or in board meetings. But I do get to do a lot of very fulfilling work that, are, that happens behind the scenes. Work like creating the Bible study each year. A couple of years ago, I felt called to the scripture that we are using today. The summer theme that year was a new creation. You all may recognize this design from some of your children and youth t-shirts. The theme comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Becky read that earlier, but I want us to highlight again verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. As we hear these words on the very first day of the new year, I want us to reflect on that verse. 
which announces that the new creation has come. But let's also talk a little bit about the context in the other verses. Paul begins by saying, we regard no one from a worldly view. This is because Paul is acknowledging the work that the Holy Spirit is doing within and through him. Today's passage is from 2 Corinthians, but Paul also talks about newness in his first letter to the Corinthians. When Paul speaks about the old passing and the new coming, he is talking about what has been made possible by Christ's death and resurrection. Our new life is only possible because of Christ. The baby that we celebrated being born last Sunday is our resurrected Savior and has made new life possible for us. Jesus being our Savior completely changed how Paul viewed what it meant to be made new. If you've ever seen the Truman Show, you know what it means to see life in a new light and to yearn for it in a different way. Truman, who's played by Jim Carrey, lived a very happy life in a perfect town with a perfect family. All of it was orchestrated by a producer as part of a reality television show in which Truman was the unknowing star. His entire world for his entire life was fabricated. When Truman realizes his life is a television set and all his family and friends are actors, he cannot go back to the old way of life, to the old normal. He yearns to escape and live his new life in the real world. As Christ followers, we make our decisions in life in light of being a Christian. When we make the decision to walk daily as disciples of Jesus Christ, we don't always see value in some things in the world the way non-believers do. We care for the orphans, the widows, the persons in prisons, and others because God has called us to do that. We do these things to honor and worship God, not because it makes us feel good, not because we want to impress others with our good heartedness. We do it for God. Now, I love to make lists. I don't know if we have any other list makers out there, but I love making lists, and I confess that every Monday morning before I sit down to work, I make a list of every single thing I want to accomplish that week, and I get immense satisfaction when I check off each thing. Now, a podcast that I used to listen to a lot is called Happier with Gretchen Rubin, and in that podcast, she talks about making a yearly list. So for 2018, it was 18 for 2018, then 19 for 2019, and essentially it's the things that you want to accomplish that year. I can tell you 20 for 2020 was not very productive for me. Didn't accomplish many of those things. Now last year for 22 for 2022, I accomplished all but three. Now some of mine have been simple, like on that list, I had go to Bucky's, since I had never been to Bucky's before. But I also had some big things like buy a new house. I can say that I did do both of those things in 2022. I found both to be fun and very overwhelming. I incorporate spiritual things in my list as well. And my desire to grow closer to God in the new year, I hope, is reflected in these lists. But perhaps because New Year's is on Sunday this year, I think I've been more acutely aware of my hopes and my goals for the year, reflecting my desire to grow closer to God. You know, we as the church make commitments. 
One of those times that we make a commitment as a church is when a baby is baptized. When a child is baptized, the pastor in a Methodist church typically asks a question to the congregation similar to this. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? And usually on the screens or in the bulletin will show a response. Maybe we will or a statement like this some of you may recognize. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. This is such an important commitment that we make in our church. We are vowing to be a part of this child's Christian community and to pray for and surround with support and help them in their faith journey. I'm sure all of you can think of persons that have done those very things for you. And I'm sure that those persons hold a special place in your heart. Now you all made this special commitment to my first child. Here's Beckett in 2017, being baptized by Reverends Mark Flynn and David Hall. Beckett is here today. He's stooped down real low so nobody can see him, but he's almost six. Now I remember how special this day was. And each time that I'm able to assist with baptism, I am struck by what a big deal our commitment to this child is. There are other commitments that we make to the church as well. Now this is a shameless plug, but if you aren't already a member of Christ Church, I would encourage you to speak with David Hall, to pray about it, and to, to learn more about what it means to become a member. For those of you who are members, you are asked a specific question about supporting the church when joining. Here's how that question is usually worded. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness? We commit to God to supporting the church with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. What would it look like for you to reflect on those five things and to prayerfully consider how God wants you to work on and improve those things in 2023? For prayer, I think it's important to recognize that one of the greatest things about our faith journey is that it is our own. We aren't all going to be able to deliver a pastoral prayer like Reverend Debbie Stokes. But we can work on praying more throughout the day or incorporating new prayer practices like reading from the Book of Common Prayer, maybe weekly or even daily. How can you grow closer to God through prayer in 2023? And when I think about presence, I think of my advisor in seminary who once told me that ministry is primarily the ministry of presence. What he meant is you have to show up in order for God to work through you. Now you know the old phrase preaching to the choir? I think maybe today it should be preaching about presence to the folks joining for worship on New Year's Day. But you know, presence can mean a lot of different things. It may not be possible for you to be in church every single Sunday, but how can you give more of your presence to God and to the church? You know, Jesus talks a lot about giving gifts in scripture. Jesus never actually gives an amount of money that we should give to the church. He instead gives instructions like, give generously. One of the best sermons I've ever heard preached 
was by Nathan Malone on stewardship. He shared how he and Vicki prayerfully make the decision how they will give each year in order to honor and grow closer to God. He talked about first giving 10% to the church and that all other gifts to organizations that they care about is on top of that. I also believe this. I know for me, it took some growth to get there. I didn't start out at 10%. I remember taking the class Crown Financial taught by Jeff and Lindsay Gallagher here at Christ a number of years ago. And I still think often about the stewardship lessons I learned through it and how it spurs me on to keep worshiping God through gifts. How can you increase your gifts to God through the church in 2023? Now, as the former minister of missions here at Christ, I know how you all worship God through your acts of service. And I have to tell you, I attended quite a few conferences for missions directors. And when I would share just how much this church did in mission work, the other missions directors would be blown away by how much you all do. But I know from my experience in that role, just how abundant the opportunities are here to get involved in more. There's always room in the van for more to go on Monday afternoon to the Bethlehem Center after school program. There's always more meals needed at Room in the Inn. There's always more help needed at Mustard Tree Ministries for the homeless. What ways can you grow in service in 2023? Now, the last of the five commitment that members make to the church is witness. For me, this was the hardest one to spell out in my 23 for 2023 list. I think all of David Hall's lessons on SMART goals has had a really big impact on me. So I was having a difficult time naming something specific and measurable, like listing be more like Christ felt really hard to measure. But as I was reflecting on how others witness to me, I realized it's through their service to others. It's through their prayers. It's through their presence. It's through their gifts making ministries possible. When we work on and improve how we do those things, our witness to others grows. You know, New Year's in the church is filled with the same hopefulness and joy that we experience on Christmas and Easter because we worship a risen Savior. It is a time for us to reflect on how God is working in and through us now and what we can do more in God's name. For me, I've been reflecting on the commitments that I've already made to the church, and I'm hoping to improve those things. For you, God could be leading you to something entirely new. My prayer is that as we begin this new year, we remember that this year, this very day was given by our Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the many ways in which you have blessed the world through the folks and ministries at Christ Church. Continue to work through each of us as we seek to follow you each and every day this year. Move us on toward perfection. Lead us to ways that we can show the light of your Son through us. Thank you for calling us to be a community of believers and the joys and love we are able to experience. 
because of that. And as we start a new year fresh, help us to remember it is all because of you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What a perfect sermon on New Year's Day. Would you help me thank Mary for coming to share that? We praise God for that reminder, and it's a perfect song also to say on New Year's Day, I will build my life on Christ. I will build my life on this perfect foundation for building. 
we believe that it begins in a personal relationship with Christ. We encourage you to either begin that relationship or deepen that relationship, to daily be committed to deepening that relationship, not just for yourself, because he's going to lead you out into the world. He's going to lead you um, into your school, into your neighborhood, into your city, into wherever there's need to help others come to know him, to meet needs wherever those needs are. May we all renew that commitment today to be his people, to live for him. Know that if there's any decision about that relationship that you want to make today, you're welcome to come as we close the service or after the service or anytime. There's contact information for Pastor David. He would love to hear from you and help you get connected here at Christ Church. Let's sing again. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you need God. May your battles in the way they should. people of Christ to go out into a new year. I'm guessing there may be a few lists made this week, right? What will be on your list for what you believe God wants to do through you, the new creation God wants to, to fashion in you. Go be the people of Christ. Amen. God bless you, be with you, and hope to see you next week with a carload, right? <laughs>